Hello everybody, welcome to another video, thank you for watching. So in this video I'm going to be going over The Loveliest Time by Carly Rae Jepsen. You know we got The Loneliest Time last year. I was pretty hot on that album, I went to see Carly live for that So Nice tour that she did. I thought, you know, absolutely tremendous show that she put on. If you ever get a chance to watch her, cannot recommend it enough. Absolutely fabulous. You know, she goes all out, she's dancing, jiving, she's got backup dancers. You know, she absolutely sounds great, great show, great atmosphere. I highly recommend anybody who's, you know, kind of bordering, shall I go for it, shall I not? Yeah, she's a must-see act, she's great. You know, and pretty recently, she has dropped the loveliest time. You know, she said, I don't want this to be seen as like a side B, you know, she did emotion side B, dedicated side B. This isn't a side B, this isn't a bunch of B sides, this is like its own separate sort of entity to her. And you know, it does show when you actually listen to this album. This album, it's got its own vision, it's got its own musical direction, shall I say. You know, and I, I thought, yeah, this merits a review as well. You know, this is quite an interesting one in her discography. You know, she's kind of departed from the sound that we kind of know her for, but she's embraced her own, you know, the style that she's developed, the personality and her music. She's kind of like thrust that into this um, other world, you know, this like dance pop sort of world. There are disco vibes, which, you know, I enjoy, but, you know, th there's more rhythm and percussion and beats that are like driving this thing on. You know, you've even got elements of funk on here. It is a, it's an interesting album. It's an interesting listen from Carly Rae. And, you know, I thought, why not? Go over it track by track, give it a review, give a few thoughts on each one, just give my general feelings on the album. But, yeah, I will say, first listen to this one wasn't for me. Honestly, I listen to it through speakers. Probably not the best way. I mean, I do prefer listening through speakers to my music, but I don't know, it doesn't do it justice. Headphones are definitely my preferred way of like, listening to this album by quite a stretch, actually. You know, you can pick out all the details and all the little nuances throughout it. You know, it's a nice listen on headphones. So yeah, let's get to it. Track one, anything to be with you. You know, she's got that sort of like goofy sort of intro to the song, you know? I wasn't too sure on this one to start with, not gonna lie. Usually a Carly album, the first track, they tend to be absolute bangers, you know what I mean? You know, on a Emotion you had Run Away With Me, those iconic beach saxophones just absolutely drawing you into like this absolute banger of an album. And dedicated, you got the track Julian leading you in, you know, another really strong opening track. Loneliest Time, one of my favourites in her entire discography, I'm not even gonna lie, Surrender My Heart. Music video for that's pretty, pretty phenomenal, I'm just gonna say. I really like that music video, proper my cup of tea. Give me the cheese, as long as you embrace it, you make it work. Give me the cheese all day, that was great, I love the video for that one. But yeah, Surrender My Heart, that's another, it strikes you, you're there, you are right into the music. This one on the loveliest time. One of her weaker introductions to an album by quite a stretch, if you ask me. You know, no, by, by no means a bad track. You know, it's got a real groovy bass line in it and these rattling sort of drums. And she does sort of set the lyrical tone for the album. You know, this album is a departure from the disco synth pop vibe, you know, that she's typically gone for, that I really enjoyed. You know, she's traded it in for a... Um, you know, that dance pop instrumental palette, and this does lead you into that. You are, you know, straight off the bat, yeah, this is different. You know, she's venturing outwards a bit, and this is an interesting sort of route that she's taking, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll stick with her for this one. Probably an alright start to the album. Yeah, pretty alright track, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not super hot on it. Personally, track to Kamikaze, I would have made that my introduction if I were Carla. I think she kind of missed one there, that is a banging tune. It's an absolute vibe. You've got these sims lurking below, these absolutely hypnotic drums on this track, and you know, you've got Carly experimenting a little with lyrical effects and whatnot. The chorus, this is a great way, you know, she feel, you know, you feel like she is crashing in head first, you know, she is on that kamikaze mission in this love that she's got. She's head over heels into this love that she's singing about, and you know, she talks about the love being fatal. It's a great blend of like, kind of like the old Carly, but you know, she's blended it in with like this 
new direction that she's heading for. This is a really strong track. I like this one quite a bit. And then after that, we've got After Last Night. You know, another W. That hook is sugary. It's sweet. You know, she sounds great over the instrumentation on here. She's really making it work. You know, you've got that hypnotic effect where the rhythm and groove, they just draw you in. And everything just sounds in place. And, you know, it works in cohesion. You know, this track, it just comes together. It works. I am pretty hot on this one, too. Aeroplanes is a probably, you know, your first departure from a certain era quality that this album has to it so far. No, I don't want to say it sounds lazy, but it feels like it's lacking the detail and quality, I'd say. That kind of draws me into the other songs on here. You know, the chorus, it, it doesn't do much for me at all. It kind of sounds, I guess, basic. You know, she sings about diamonds in the rough. I don't know. It's a clear step down in quality for me, I'm sorry to say. I suppose the redeeming quality of this track is like the last 45 seconds. You know, we get this acoustic guitar. It's a nice little outro to the song, but... Yeah, overall, I am not too hot on this track. Shy Boy, this was one of the big singles off this. This was the teaser track. This is a song where Carly is portraying a romance with a shy boy. You know, and, you know the sort of experiences that might offer up. Deep conversation, not dancing in the club. You know, it kind of feels a bit surface level lyrically to start with, but that chorus, oh, chef's kiss to that one. It's a totally different 80s sort of U-turn that she kind of takes. It's almost anthemic in nature. Yeah, complete win for me on this track. That, that that chorus, it just drew me in. I thought, that is fantastic. Props to you on this one. You've got that keyboard solo. And it just works. You know, this is a proper bop. Yeah, I've got to give absolute props to Carly on this one. Absolutely smashes it. What a great single. She kind of switches it up again on this album. You know, she isn't following one direct route as far as this genre goes you know she is taking new turns she you know we've got a more lurky affair up next collage um, you know when you compare it to the fellow tracks on this you know this is a lurky affair this is almost like a i guess i describe it as a smoky boozy sort of like jazz dance fusion of sorts you know oh is flowing over this song almost effortless in her delivery you know it's so, she sounds so smooth on here and the lyrics you know they hold up nicely as well you know it's a song of regret and almost a love lost as you know Carly blames herself on the sort of outcome, you know, and it all kind of incorporates into the uh, title, you know, it's a collage, you know, the lyrics, the film is scrapbook in nature, and like I said, Carly's delivery of these lyrics, top draw, you know, good on it, absolutely splashes this song, and Shadow, that's up next, another win for me, you know, when she's going, city to city, hobby to hobby, you know me, you know me, yeah, it's Oh, smoother. And again, you know, she feels seamless on this one. And it picks up where Collage left off. It's, it's like a more upbeat affair, you know, and she's reflecting on this relationship in a more so positive, almost cohesive sort of light. And she compares the love to like a structure that's almost built around her and kind of made her what she is. To me, Collage and Shadow, they're kind of a really nice pairing, you know. It's a night and day sort of contrast between the two. That just works nicely. I don't know if that was intentional. They are next to each other on here, so maybe that's why I'm comparing them a bit. But they kind of work in harmony as far as I'm concerned. Now I'm going to say it straight off the bat. Arguably my favourite track of her entire career. I mean, if you're going to listen to one track off this album, you know, say you're looking at my tier chart and you think, oh, I'll give that one a go. This is the one. Give this one a go. This is the track. Psychedelic Switch. This song is incredible. I'm going to say it now. This is it. Fantastic song. What a tune, that's all I can say about this one. I mean, the songs on here, you know, they've been decent up to this point, but this shit, this just hits another level. It, this is above everything else on here. You know, this is a track, you know, when this one comes on, I turn it up and just completely vibe out to this. You know, she captures a psychedelic sort of sound and, you know, she fuses it with these spaced out euphoric lyrics. And the delivery is oozing such confidence as she guides us through this almost like wormhole production. You know, and as we slide down a spiral in space to like almost some other world. You know, this is a crowning moment for Carly in my book. How on earth has she managed to go on such a run of producing such good music? And after creating such a decent body of work. Because Eden does one of the best if not the best track of her entire career. Yeah, this is beyond me, this one. This is great. I love the sounds on here. I love the way the production. It, you know, if you have ever tripped out on anything, this is kind of the sort of, like, vibe. As you're kind of, like, sinking into that wormhole. It is crazy how she's managed to capture that psychedelic sort of sound. Absolute monster of a song. You know, this song alone is, you know, I want to see it live again. I want to hear this one live. This is an effort well worth my money. Fantastic. Worth the price of admission alone. So yeah, how does she uh, follow this one up? So right is the track that she uses to follow this one up. You know, it was never going to top Psychedelic Switch, but, you know, we're not even bordering on that sort of level. But, you know, this isn't a bad come down by any measure. You know, I love the spaced out sims that we get on this one. You know, we get another swear word from Carla. 
which kind of feels like a one every album sort of quote with actually almost has to feel like this age. But yeah, this track doesn't really stand out to me as belonging in the upper rankings of the tracks on here. You know, it's not an offensive cut, you know, it makes the grade. Then up next we've got Come Over. You know, I like the chorus on here. The instrumental feels a little bland to me, I guess. But, you know, it just doesn't draw me in like the other tracks, really. It's not a bad song by any means. It just doesn't hold up like the other tracks on here, I guess. You know, I'm pretty lukewarm. I'd say it's the best way that I'd describe this song as far as my personal feelings go towards it. Then you've got Put It To Rest. Again, track listing Carly. This should have been the closer in my opinion. This, it's got almost like a hospital sort of feel to it. You've got this gentle piano that glitters throughout the song. Yeah, the Sims on here, you know, they're phenomenal. They're driving. The scattered drums, you know, they sound great too. And it kind of all comes together for a more sort of serious sort of song. It's not an absolute standout moment, but it's a moment I enjoy in here. And, you know, I think it works great. I enjoy the way the elements come together nicely and you kind of get this sort of like urgency sort of feeling as Carly talks about waking up in the emptiest of empty rooms you know it all kind of fits together perhaps this should have been the final track on here I kind of think it beats out what we do end up getting as the final track on here up next we've got Stadium Love you know this is a bombastic song with large stadium like sims you know the name is very appropriate on here as Carly sings about how this is a song for the weekend lovers you know you've got big chorus guitar solos you know it's dangerous or close to bordering onto the lines of obnoxious I'm not even gonna lie but yeah it kind of gets a pass I guess I'm giving this one a pass and yeah I kind of like it it's pretty good it's not an offensive number you know it kind of works it's all right for what it is and you know for a fact this song is absolutely going to slap in a live setting it is going to go great it's going to be a great song live and then that gets us to the final track Weekend Love thematically Carly is ending us on a pretty high note I guess if it to rest was the last track that she went for you know we are going out on a somber note you know this is not an upbeat ending to album and and Carly didn't do that to us. This could arguably be classed as the worst track on this album as far as I'm concerned. You know, got, you've got these distorted sort of like robotic chipmunk vocals break down during this. You know, they do nothing for me on here. You know, it's a, it's not a bad closing track. It's not memorable. Not, not the most memorable ending, I guess. But yeah, overall, this album, it was a bit of a surprise as to the direction that Carly went in here. Overall, I will say I do appreciate the bravery of an artist willing to expand the horizon, step out of the comfort zones, you know. She could have carried on releasing disco tunes. This is better than an artist trying to release the same album again and again and again. And you know, we see that artists, they kind of, a lot of them, they kind of get into the zone, they carve out the niche. You know, this is what it is. I've got my whole fan base, they're going to enjoy this style of music, I'll stick with it. Carly She's took elements of what people like about her music, you know, it is that tender sort of loving sort of romance innocence about her lyrics and whatnot, but musically she has taken her fans kind of left field into a different realm of the pop world and it, it works good, you know, I appreciate the fact that she's done that. As a project, where do I think it ranks? Is it better than The Loneliest Time? I'm going to say yeah, I'm going to say I do prefer this to The Loneliest Time, I think the standout moments on here... They stand a lot higher than on The Loneliest Time. And I think the moments I'm not as struck on, they're not as offensive as the cuts on The Loneliest Time. Surrender My Heart, great track. You know what I mean? My, my favourite song, that I've made it clear. I've done a review on it. This, to me, is more consistent in quality. The highs are higher. Psychedelic Switch is, like, possibly a best song. Though I will say the highs on here, they are not as frequent. They're not as frequent, but... They do hold up for what they are. Like I say, as an overall project, it is far more cohesive. To be honest with you, I, I kind of like that. I kind of like this direction she's going in. I think it's interesting. It makes for a more pleasurable listening experience. Stylistically, it's more interesting. She's kind of spiced it up a bit. It feels fresh. It feels, you know, the move that she's made here makes more excited for her next projects. I think she's pulled off another genre very nicely. I guess for that, I'm going to give her an 8 out of 10. It's not the strongest 8 in the world, you know, but it's a lot stronger than the loneliest time and I really did enjoy that album I'm not going to slag that album off at all I enjoyed that album it was good but this this is just yeah moments on this it just wins me over so much more easier and again the lows on it they don't drag me down as far another great album from Carly what a great artist and it's a shame she doesn't get as much attention in the pop popmosphere or whatever people call it these days as like other artists who get far more acclaim for doing a lot less and being a lot less brave with the music so yeah good on you Carly you know fantastic stuff I 
cannot wait to hear her next album. Well, yeah, thank you for watching this one. My next video is going to be a Wise Blood video. Yeah, it's going to be the next one in the discography that I'm meant to be going over at a very snail like pace. And it is called The Outside Room. So, yeah, I guess tune in next time for that, guys. Yeah, like I say, enjoyed this album. Get a listen. Well worth your time. Cheers for watching. Good night, Vienna.